want you to lift your Bible high, and I want you to repeat after me. Uh, this is my Bible. My weapon for spiritual warfare is sharper than a two-edged sword, and I'm not afraid to use it. Amen, amen. Turn with me uh, to Matthew Gospel, chapter number 24. And I want to look at one verse, and I'm going to deal with one word. How about that? Matthew chapter 24, verse number 13. Matthew chapter number 24, verse number 13. I want to deal with one verse. Matthew chapter number 24. And I want to look at verse number 13 when you have it to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter number 24, verse number 13. And it reads, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. One translation said, the one who endures. Uh, another translation says, those enduring to the end shall be saved. I want to talk on one, deal with one verse, with one word, and that's consistency. Consistency. Amen. I want to deal with consistency. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of of the Lord. Um, it's quite interesting how Jesus gave a list of calamities that the believers would eventually face in the last days. And he goes on to say, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Uh, oftentimes, we don't even realize how important it is to be consistent. But we must understand that when it comes to God, God is very adamant about his people being consistent. In other words, in fact, as you read throughout the word of God, you will find out how being inconsistent really displeases God. If you ever want to put a frown on God's face, be inconsistent. Inconsistency displeases God. Now, first of all, I need you to understand, inconsistency is a real bad character flaw. And that's why God don't like it, because it doesn't reflect the character nor the nature of God. The Bible said that we are made in the image and the likeness of him. That's what the Bible said in Genesis 1 and 26. And it said, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Now, we must understand something. The purpose of God making us after his image and his likeness is so that we as his people would reflect his nature and his character within the earth realm. So that is the reason why he said he is making us. In, the, in his image and his likeness because he wants us to reflect his nature and his character within the earth realm. As a people, we need to uh, understand that inconsistency is not who he is. I want to say this again. Inconsistency is not who God is. It is not in his nature. It is not in his character. And nor is it is in his will for us to operate in inconsistency. I need you to understand something. The fact that God hand is upon you yeah. is when consistency is shown in your life. Right. I want to say something. If you know, if you want to know if the hand of God is really upon somebody, just look at the consistency that is on their life. I'm going to tell you right now. I came here to preach this morning. I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, my God. 
if you want to know that the hand of God is upon an individual, just watch their life. Watch how consistent they are when God is calling them to do a thing. Amen. When God is calling you and he's calling you to a thing, the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. It's nobody going to stop you. It's nobody going to change your mind because there's something about you that's showing God that, that, that God's hand is upon you. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to show you when you look at David's life. David's report was, you see, David lived a consistent life before God. And the report that David had was uh, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 34. David had a report. He said, when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, he said, I went after it struck it and rescued the sheep from the, its mouth. If it attacked me, I took it by its mane, struck it and killed it. I have uh, killed a lion and a bear and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has challenged the army of the living God. Then he went on to say, and David added, the Lord who saved me from the lion and the bear will save me from this Philistine. And go, Saul told David, and may the Lord be with you. That's what he told me. He said, go on, handle this giant, and may God be with you. I, wanna, I want you to understand something, that consistency is the evidence of your faith in God. Oh, my God. Y'all need to watch. check it now. Consistency. It's the evidence that you have faith in God. And watch this now. On the other side of this thing, inconsistency is the evidence that you are in doubt. So let me say this again. Consistency is the evidence of your faith in God. Inconsistency is the evidence that you are in doubt. Watch this now. Inconsistency prevents you from entering into God's divine objective for your life. I'm going to say it again inconsistency because y'all ain't hearing me I got to get a little bit louder then the inconsistency prevents you from entering into God's divine objective for your life watch this now the first generation that God delivered out of Egypt didn't go into the promised land except Joshua and Caleb and I'm going to tell you why they didn't go into the promised land it's amazing to me that God came and he delivered them out of Egypt he got them out of the hand of bondage but still they still didn't make it to the promised land and I'm going to share the reason why you why they didn't make it into the promised land. The Bible said that only two houses made it into the promised land and that was only Joshua and Caleb. The reason why that generation didn't go in, it was due to inconsistency. There was, there was an inconsistency. Inconsistency robs you from the God's divine objective for your life. Listen, God wants to bring all of us into something. I'm going to tell you right now. Each and every one of you, God have a plan for your life. He want to bring each and every one of us into something. But you must understand something. You will never get there if you are being inconsistent. You will never get to what God desire you to be if you are an inconsistent person. Let me share something with you. From the moment that God delivered them until the brink of the promised land, the first generation that God delivered out of Egypt showed inconsistent behavior. I mean, here God comes to honor the cries of the people, so they want to be delivered from the hand of their oppressors. So God raises up Moses, raise him up, send him back to a people, deliver these people, and all they got for God is inconsistency. Let me share what I'm talking about. Exodus chapter number 14, verse number 11. While they was at the Red Sea, God ain't even delivered them already, and they're already complaining. He, ain't, he, he delivered them. He then got them out of the hands of the Egyptians, bring them to the Red Sea, and they already showing inconsistent behavior. Let's go to Exodus chapter number 14, verse number 11. Exodus 14, verse number 11. For time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and read. They said to Moses, did you bring us out into the desert to die because there were no graves in Egypt? Look what you have done by bringing us out of Egypt. Didn't we tell you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us go on serving the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. And, 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 that, and, and, and when you look at that now, he hadn't delivered them a day yet. They already showing inconsistent behavior. Now, get, now, now watch this now. Peep the scenario. Now, three days later in Exodus chapter 15, verse number 24, here they go again showing inconsistent behavior. 
Exodus 15 and 24, he said that the people complained about Moses by asking, what are we supposed to drink? Moses cried out unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord set down laws and rules for them to live by, and there he, he tested them. Now, it's amazing to me. Now, God just brings them out of the promised land, and they're complaining that they're going to die at the Red Sea. Three days later, they're complaining that they ain't got no water to drink. Guess what? And 42 days later, in Exodus chapter number 16, here they go complaining again. In Exodus 16 and uh, 2, it said, in the desert, the whole community complained again about Moses and Abraham. The Israelites said to them, if only the Lord had let us die in Egypt. There was set by there we set by our pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. You brought us out into the desert to let us starve to death. Now, now listen, all this complaining, all this inconsistent behavior piled up in front of the Lord to the point that they, they complained all the way to Numbers chapter 14, verse number 21. They all just complaining, and, and, and all they did was show was inconsistent behavior. Look what they said in number 14 and 21, and God said, I'm, I'm, I'm through with them now. I'm done with them. God said, I, I'm going to show you what inconsistent behavior will get you. This is what he says in Numbers 14 and 21. But as I live and as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, I solemnly swear that none of these people, who saw my glory, the miraculous signs I did in Egypt and in the desert will see the land which I promised their ancestors. They have tested me now ten times and refused to obey me. None of those who treat me with contempt will see it. God said, now that whole generation that I brought out, Moses, they ain't going to see the promised land. They're not going to see it because they only operate in contempt against me. Now, I want you to understand something, that God has no pleasure in inconsistent people. He has no pleasure in inconsistent people. God takes pleasure in his people who are only consistent. I want to show you something. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 35. I'm going to work y'all this morning. He takes no pleasure in inconsistent people. But he only takes pleasure in people who are consistent. Hebrews 10 and 35. Look what I want you to read. I want you to catch it. Hebrews 10 and 35. I still hear, hear pages turning. I want you to see this. Hebrews 10 and 35, and it reads, verse number 35, 10, verse number 35. It said, therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which have great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done all the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Y'all reading that? He said, my, heart, my soul have no pleasure in him. Write this down. I need you to write this down for those who are taking notes. Instability is the product of inconsistency. Say this again. Instability is the product of inconsistency. And watch this now. I'm going to give you something else to write down. Prosperity is the product of consistency. Listen to me. Instability is the product of inconsistency. Prosperity is the product of consistency. Watch this now. Unstable people are inconsistent in character. When you find somebody that's inconsistent, they are unstable in character. Unstable people are inconsistent in character. Let's go to James. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to James chapter number one. And this is why God have a problem with people who are inconsistent in character. If you are inconsistent in the, in, 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 with God, God said, I have a problem with it. Because when you are inconsistent in the eyes of God, you are a wish-washy individual. And God can't really, God don't really deal with wish-washy individual. Either you're going to be with me or you're not. But if you're not with me, then I ain't got nothing for you. 
James chapter 1, verse number 6. This is what he said. James 1 and 6. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable, not in some, but in all of his ways. One translation said when you ask for something, don't have a, a, any doubt. A person who has doubt is like a wave that is blown by the wind and tossed by the sea. A person who has doubt shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord. He said because a person who has doubt is thinking about two different things at the same time and can't make up his mind about anything. So when you are unstable, you are operating in two different spirits and you are double-minded you are double -minded and you can't make your mind up about anything. So God have an issue with that. See, an inconsistent person doesn't live by solid principles. So when you find an inconsistent person, just know he or she do not live by solid principles. But when you find a consistent person, when you find a consistent person, they operate or they live by solid principles. See, because they, they, they know the importance of operating by solid principles. You know, and our solid principles should be the word of God. But unfortunately, everybody don't live by these solid principles because an inconsistent person don't live by solid principles. But a consistent person operate or live by solid principles. So people who are consistent in a particular area of their life always prosper. So when you see somebody that's good, in a, uh, a particular area of their life, they're going to always prosper. Yeah. The reason why they're going to always, because here's the thing, prosperity is the product of consistency. Yes, it is. I'm, yes. I'm, 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 I'm going to break this down. Um, yes, it is. Prosperity is the reward of hard work. Yes. It's the aftermath of your personal labor. Prosperity is the condition of enjoying great wealth, success, or good fortune. In other words, it's the result of, it is the consequence of you staying committed to a thing, which brings you success. All right? Consistency produces a great reward. That's why you want to be consistent. But cons consistency produces a great reward. Going back to Hebrews 10 and uh, 35. I want you to show what I'm talking about. I'm going to kind of bring it out now. Hebrews 10 and 35, in, it, in, in this portion of scripture, it talks about holding fast to your faith in God. Yes. It talks about the importance of being consistent. Yes. Check it out now. This is what it says. Hebrews 10 and 35. Because I want you to look at it again. It said, cast not away therefore your comfort, confidence, which have great repentance of reward. One translation said, don't lose your confidence. It will bring you a great reward. Yes. Another translation said, you will be richly rewarded. Yes, sir. That was, you will be richly rewarded. He said, now go on to verse number 36. For, for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, yes. you might receive the promise. I'm going to say it again. Yes. And another translation said, you must be patient. After you have done what God wants, you will get what he promised you. Yes, oh, my God. I'm going to say this again. This is why a lot of people get upset with God. I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to break it down in a nutshell. They get upset with God because they want the blessing, but don't want to go through uh, what it takes to get the blessing. See, to get the real blessing of God, it requires work. Listen, the blessing or the reward doesn't come until you have done the will of God. <laughs> That's what the writer said. It don't come to after you have done the will of God. So that's what he says here. It's after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. We are living, listen, we're living in a time where most people lack consistency. They lack drive. They lack tenacity. They lack consistency. And you will never receive a reward from God operating in inconsistent behavior. You, 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 you can look for the reward, you can pray all day and pray all night, but God said it will not manifest if you are 
operating in inconsistent behavior. And I think most people are, are, are born, listen to me now, I think when I think about um, this, 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 the whole dynamics of what I'm preaching, I think most people are born with the potential to be great. Listen to me now. I said most people. Now, I know everybody's not going to be great, but I'm saying most people, listen to me, they are born with the potential now to be great. Listen to what I'm saying. They are, they are born with the potential to be great, but here's the thing. The potential has to turn into reality. Check this out. The reality is you ain't born the best. You ain't born, born to be the best. You become the best. Let me say this again. See, a lot of people think that you are, you are not born best. You become the best. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. See, God allows adversities, trials, and challenges to turn the potential into reality. I'm going to say it again. The reason why some of us, and all of us must go through trials. All of us, all of us must go through adversity. All of us have to go through challenges because it turns. What the goals of the, of the trials, the challenges, and the adversities is to turn that potential into reality. Oh, watch this now. See, um, and this is why God wants us to be consistent because consistency is so important in the eyes of God. Because consistency turns potential into reality. Check this out. Consistency turned potential into reality. In other words, God allowed, watch this now, the lion and the bear to systematically to come into David's life. And I don't know who this is for. Some of you, you, there's things in your life and you don't know where they came from, but God systematically allowed them to come in your life for a reason and for a season in your life. Because the reason why he allowed whatever it may be to come into your life is he trying to put, change the potential, change that, turn that potential into reality. See, here's the thing. See, God systematically allowed that lion, systematically allowed the bear to come into David's life because he was turning the potential into reality. In other words, the lion and the bear only showed the potential of David's greatness. Right. Oh my God, the lion and the bear only showed the potential of his greatness. So a lot of times some of the stuff that you are going through is showing the potential of your greatness. But baby, you ain't there yet. Oh my God, you ain't there yet. But the devil know and the demon know that the potential is there. Oh my God. But you don't know it yet. You don't know that the potential is there. You, all the only thing you're looking at is the trial, the, the adversities, the disadvantage that you are going through. But you don't know that God systematically allowing you to go through it because there's some, some potential in you that he's trying to turn into reality. Because I created you with the potential to be great. Uh-huh. You know the sad part about it? Is a lot of people going to die and never get to the place of greatness. But you was born with the potential, though, to be that great thing that God is calling you to be. To be. Now, he was born. At, the lion, the bear, only showed the potential of David's greatness. But the reality of David's greatness, watch this now was shown when David killed the giant. Listen, the reality, here's where the potential turned into reality. The moment that David killed Goliath, the whole earth knew that David was great. He turned, oh my God, he turned, God said, I'm going to turn this potential. I'm going to turn this thing over and I'm going to turn this into reality because now I'm going to put you in a situation, David, where greatness is about to show up in your life. I'm going to show you the potential when it manifested into something great because it wasn't until David slayed his giant, oh my God. When David slayed his giant, just when he got greatly rewarded. It was after he slayed his giant that he got compensated. It's after he slayed his giant, gosh, this, that people start singing songs about this man. That, oh my God, that, you can tell you on a whole nother level. It was when David slayed the giant, he no longer lived in the pasture no more. He had God made room for him in the palace. 
because God turned his potential into a reality. He said, boy, you only think you only, only thought that you was great, but I'm going to show you how great you really are. So God orchestrated. Every day, every moment, he said, look, I'm going to raise this giant up. And it was idiosyncratic. That's the reason why everybody could not go and fight that giant because it wasn't a giant to fight. It was David giant to fight. Uh uh-uh, uh, this day, this giant wasn't, wasn't made for you, Saul. This giant wasn't made for, for, for David's brother. This David, this giant wasn't made for all the rest of the subject in the kingdom. But I specifically made this giant for David to show, to turn his potential into a reality. And some of you are going through something, and God said, I'm letting you go through because I want to turn that potential. Into a reality. Prosperity is the product of consistency. And God prepared David because he was consistent. Let me tell you something. Nobody in whatever profession that they're in become great at it. With an inconsistent behavior. If you want to be the best at what you do. You got to perfect your craft. You got to be consistent at what you do. These NFL football players. They don't just walk in the locker room and say here I am. No, no baby. They had to be from, from, from elementary to, 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 uh, high, to grade school. To junior high. To high school. To college. They are getting prepared. In other words, they're, they're consistent in what they do in order to become prosperous in what they do. You, look, you got to be the best at what you be. The only way they can identify you to be the best is you got to be consistent. And when you're consistent, guess what? It shows that you are prosperous in what you do. You're successful because a lot of people are giving prosperity a bad name. And that's what it's not a bad You got to understand what prosperity is. It's, it's being successful. At what you do. I don't know about you. I want to be successful. I don't want to be a a Johnny come lately person. If I'm going to be a businessman, I want to be a good businessman. I want to be, who want to get in the business to be a a failure? But you get into it to be the best that you can be. God don't don't want you operating in inconsistent behavior because it's consistent behavior don't bring glory to him. But when you are consistent, with your, in your behavior, it got the, 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 uh, the fruit of it is going to be prosperity. You're going to prosper if you be consistent. I don't know nobody that keep going to school, graduate, going from level to level, and don't get a diploma. Something wrong if you don't get a, you don't get a diploma and it shows that you went from grade school to, to first grade, to second grade, to third grade. It's showing that you are consistent in going to school. So the reward is you getting you a diploma. I'm going to say this. Anthony Robinson said, Robin said, and I quote, It's not what you do once in a while that shapes our lives. It's what you do consistently. In other words, you can't do it just a little bit at a time. You got, it got to be an everyday all day long commitment to God. If you want to be great in whatever you do, and from a spiritual aspect, if you want to be great in God, that means you got to pick up your Bible. You got, to, you got to read. You got to study. You got to get on your knees and pray. You got to turn over the plate every once in a while. You go, you, if you're going to be great in God, it's going to re- require some type of commitment on your, on your part. It's going to co- require some type, of consist, com- some type of consistency on your part to go higher in God or to grow. Whatever you do, not only just in God, whatever you do, if you, whatever you do, whatever your occupation is, if you want to be great at what you do, it's going to require you being consistent at it. I read a quote and somewhere and it went, uh, discipline is the gap between your goals and your dreams. Discipline is the gap between your goals and your dreams. In other words, you got to have discipline 
And you got to have consistency if you want to see the, um, the, the, the fruit of your labor. You want to see the reward that comes from you being consistent. You know, people don't understand in times like this, and I'm going to use this here too, is that I, 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 I come encounter with a lot of people and I tell them, you know, you don't have to live paycheck to paycheck. And I tell them the reason why a lot of people are broke in this day and time is because they're inconsistent in, in managing their wealth. You got, you, God wants you to be consistent in managing your wealth. If you don't manage your wealth right, then naturally the reward of it is you're going to lose it. But if you manage your wealth properly, the reward of it is you're going to be successful with, your, with your, your finances. You cannot be uh, misappropriating your funds. And expecting uh, a good results, but when you when you uh, uh, appropriate your funds correctly, then you're gonna have the positive results that you're looking for. You know, I, I don't understand this because a lot of people tell me, "Well, I got a job and I can't um, I can't save nothing. I can't." I said, "You can save something. Don't say what you can't do. You can put away something, but that's just the mindset you, that you have. See, a lot of times we want to start off so big. Now it's the small things you start off." Start off with you five dollars a week and move it from five dollars to ten dollars, from ten dollars to twenty dollars, from twenty dollars to twenty-five. But start somewhere. So, so you got to start watching how you manage your, your, your finances. Francis, uh, Francis Bacon said, and I quote: "Consistency is the foundation of virtue." In other words, consistency is the effective force to do something. So, if you don't have consistency, you don't have the effective force. To do something. Colossians 3 and 23. I'm bringing it to a close. 3 and 23. 3 and 23. Colossians. God wants us to be consistent people. So we need to be consistent in whatever we do. Whether it's on a job. Whether it's in the house of God, God wants us to be consistent. This is what he says in uh, Colossians 3 and 23. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Amen. Look what he says. He said, whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. And that's why I said when you're consistent, let me say not unto men. That means whatever God is, whatever you're doing in life. Don't look at man. Look at God. So he even saying, so in your, if, on your, in your earthly occupation, God said, whatever your employer tell you to do it, he said, do it to the best. Do it like you're doing it unto the Lord. Don't do it unto him, but do it like you're doing it unto the Lord. Even in the church, when you come here and you, and you assigned a uh, responsibility, don't do it as you're doing it unto me as the pastor, but do it like you're doing it unto the Lord. You said when, when you singing, oh man, they won't let me lead in the choir, so I'm going I'm going to sit down. You then you doing it unto men. But when you are doing it unto the Lord, you don't care what people think about you. No, you don't care what people say about you cuz you ain't doing it unto them. You are doing it unto the Lord. So the the word here. One verse, one word. Be consistent. Because God do not reward inconsistent behavior standing all over this building. He do not reward inconsistent behavior. 